Hiya there, today we're going to look at a 10 mark explain question and that question is explain whether socialisation is an important cause of crime basically looking at whether your socialisation is a reason that some people turn to criminal behaviour or deviant and criminal behaviour so a 10 mark question uh, linked to explain so I would look to be using between 3 to 4 paragraphs it's an explained question, so make sure you use the word because uh, on regular occasion. Always link the answer you give back to the question. So, on final of your and final sentence of your, sorry, the final sentence of your paragraph, always link it back and say that is the reason why socialisation is an important factor why people choose to to commit crime. Um, Use point evidence effect to structure your, your sentences into paragraphs or if you prefer REE, give a reason, explain it and explain further or give an example and aim to be spending 10 to 15 minutes on this exam question. So I'm going to take you through the four areas that um, are important factors in relation to this, this question and what I would look to be using in terms of answering and gaining maximum marks. So the question, explain whether socialisation is an important cause of crime and the first area I would look towards is primary socialisation which is in relation to your family and um, that is the first form of socialisation that you will you will be socialised into and through and obviously um, depending on what type of family you are born into and then brought into will have a um, um, an impact upon whether you choose to become involved in deviant or criminal behaviour. Obviously, if your parents are involved in criminal, sorry, deviant and criminal behaviour, then you are very likely to um, to follow that route. And that route is known as a deviant career, a path that a person labelled a criminal may follow. And basically, if your parents have have been in prison or in fact involved in that sort of behaviour, then you may look at that and see that as the norm the normal behaviour, even as far as something as simple as swearing, so if, if swearing is a regular occurrence within a household, then you are likely to become part of that, in particular um, the use of cigarettes and then on to the use of drugs. Um, it may be a path you follow purely through your primary socialisation. Uh, the second area we're going to look at links into secondary socialisation, and then obviously big key words that come into there is um, subcultures. Um, because when you go to school you may become part of a anti-school subculture that may become involved in criminal activity and you may in fact become involved in criminal activity within school um, such as vandalism, fighting, um, smoking, underage smoking and in fact underage drinking and then you've got keywords such as peer pressure comes into play there um, in particular who you spend your time with over a weekend um, other key words you could look to be using is labelling, um, which is a view that people influenced by the words other people use. So basically that people view you as a certain type, so therefore then that then links into um, self-fulfilling prophecy, which I'll come on to next. Um, also within secondary socialisation, um, other areas can come into there, such as, such as work, um, and then in fact the media, um, your interest towards media, whether it's in, um, watching watching television programs that encourage violence or glam make violence glamour, uh, glamorous, sorry, if I use the correct uh, language, sorry. Um, I remember in my, my time of teaching the films such as Train Spotting and Green Green Street had a big impact upon children's behaviour and the clothes they wore and in fact their behaviours around school and, and, and using language that was associated to the film and it was kind of glam glamorised um, the fact of, of using drugs and violence um, so then that then comes into certain other areas such as people having an identity of being part of subcultures such as football hooliganism and things like that so your second socialisation is, is a key area and I would use that as a large part of a paragraph to explain the reasons why secondary socialisation can impact um, someone going down the road, the route of, of criminal behaviour. The next one I'm briefly going to talk over is um, self-fulfilling prophecy which is the idea that the labels people are given will turn out to be true and um, 
you know, obviously this links into the labelling theory, but if people are labelled a certain way, then, you know, their behaviours may, may um, go down the line, that they become that person people believe, which is known as a self-fulfilling prophecy. And eventually through, you know, through primary socialisation, through secondary socialisation, then when people leave school, they may then go down what we call the deviant career, which is a path that a person labelled carries through. So the use of selling drugs, the use of football hooliganism, and basically criminal behaviour. So self-fulfilling prophecy is a, is an area that can answer that question, and obviously links into a reason why someone may go down the line of of, of being part of criminal behaviour. Um, also linking into um, self-fulfilling prophecy secondary socialisation is other keywords such as the strain theory the idea that the pressure to succeed encourages people to turn to crime and basically because of that people may want to, to, be, to be deemed as successful but often can't and therefore turn to criminal behaviour purely through strain to be successful and criminal behaviour is an easier option to earn money rather than going down the legal path You've also got in there um, territorial identities and gangs, postcode violence, where people um, mark their areas uh, and become involved in, in criminal behaviour purely because of where they're from. Um, rival gangs is certainly a, a good example you could use in, in secondary socialisation and self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and they're all key words but would bolster your, your grade, so if you can get them in that would be superb. So as you are um, listening through this video, just make key notes of the key terms I'm using and then look at using this video to structure your, your answer. The final one, um, you can just put a concluding paragraph talking but, and just looking at a contrasting view, but uh, as a sociologist you always look at, at, at everybody's sort of view and then make your own decision or, or, or link certain ideas together and that is the nature theory but some people believe that some people actually um, are born evil and it's uh, biological explanations as to reasons why why someone performs um, criminal behaviour and it's actually nothing to do with the socialisation process more to do with um, genes um, people with um, bipolar disorder uh, a mental disorder that can make people very active or depressed and therefore their behaviour very, very um, unpredictable. So there's four areas but you could discuss there but I would certainly use a secondary socialisation as your largest paragraph within this, this, this answer and, and then link it into your self-fulfilling prophecy and, and bring in obviously as many key words and areas but you can because it's a, it's, a really, um, it's a really good question this but you can get some really rich um, explanations as to reason you know is it socialization that causes somebody to become involved in criminal activity and there's lots there's lots and lots of different areas you can go down this but i'm just giving you a few areas that um may support you in that and then finally um thanks to one of my students um sarah she's kindly written a, a writing framework that you could use to structure your assignment um, using the explain question as you can see in front of you. So I would pause it and then now using the keywords you've used, bring it back in and look to, to structure your your uh, answer and then give it to your teacher, let them have a look and be really proud of your 10 marks. Thank you very much.